Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black draw 2 synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of new cards from the Brothers War, and one of those is Gix, Yogmoth Praetor. This is one of the engine cards in the deck, a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three legendary Phyrexian Praetor, saying whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to an opponent, we can pay one life, and if we do, we get to draw a card. So Gix is awesome alongside some cheap evasive creatures, especially cards like Fairy Vandal, which we can flash in on turn 2, turn 3 untap, play Gix, attack the opponent to draw a card, which will also put an extra plus 1 counter on the Vandal. We've got additional flyers with Ledger Shredder, which also fits into our draw 2 theme, as it can enable some of those draw 2 synergies by conniving if we cast our second spell each turn, and we've got lots of cheap 1 and 2 mana plays to enable the Ledger Shredder. And then the Thopter mechanic is another new one, a 2-1 that says whenever we draw our second card each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on the mechanic, so similar to Fairy Vandal, and when the mechanic dies, create a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, so even if it trades, we still get an extra 1-1 flyer that can further enable our synergies with Gix and the other card draw effects in the deck. We also have two copies of Evangel of Synthesis, a 2-3. When it enters, we get to draw a card and then discard a card to potentially enable cards like our Mechanic and Fairy Vandal. And then as long as we've drawn two or more cards this turn, the Evangel gets plus one plus and has a Menace, so it could be another evasive attacker. And then another great addition is Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim, a 5-mana Planeswalker, starts out on 4 loyalty and has a passive ability saying whenever we draw a card at any point, we can put a loyalty counter on Teferi. So the zero ability that draws a card is essentially a plus one ability, and all the other card draw effects in the deck will add on to Teferi's loyalty, making it much more difficult for the opponent to kill it with combat damage. The minus two is also great, making a 2-2 blue spirit creature token with vigilance, and says whenever we draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, so that can help us play offense and defense, gives us a large board presence on the ground while we keep attacking the opponent in the air, and then all the extra loyalty from all the card draw could also potentially lead to a minus 12 ultimate, which can be a one-sided board wipe. And then we've got additional card draw with Kaito Shizuki, which can help us draw, and then we don't even have to discard if we've attacked this turn, so also pairs quite nicely with all the evasive creatures, so it's similar to Gix in that way, and then can also make an evasive ninja token, and eventually maybe get to a minus 7 emblem, which will reward us for hitting the opponent, as now we get to tutor up a blue or black creature and put it straight onto the battlefield, and those could include Shieldred as a one-off, 4-5 with Death Touch, another payoff for drawing extra cards, as we now gain 2 life, so it can help offset the life loss from Gix, and also drains the opponent for two if they try and draw, and it's somewhat similar to the Puppeteer, another payoff for drawing a second card each turn, as now the opponent loses two life and we gain two life, and when the Puppeteer dies, we get to return a creature with mana value three or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it could even get back Gix if the opponent answered it. It's very much possible that Shieldred is still just better than the Puppeteer, although at single black it's also slightly easier to cast, so just trying one of each for now and we'll see how they perform. And then we've got additional interaction, since of course drawing extra cards is great, but we still need to make sure we can control the board and make sure the opponent doesn't get out of hand, so having cheap interaction to deal with opposing creatures is a great way to complement our card draw effects. So at one mana there's three copies of Cut Down to destroy smaller creatures, and two copies of Fading Hope as a nice bounce spell. Then we've got Shore Up to protect our own creatures from opposing removal spells. Can also untap our creature in the process to maybe set up an ambush. And then Consider, another instant speed card draw effect, and has now been rewarded to just say Surveil 1, draw a card, since Surveil is now an evergreen keyword, so that's nice. So this can potentially enable our draw two synergies at instant speed for just one mana, and also a great card to play alongside a Lancer Shredder to enable Connive. And then finally, four copies of Go for the Throat as our removal spell of choice, playing this over Infernal Grasp, since we're already losing quite a bit of life to Gix, so I want to make sure not to lose any more life to Infernal Grasp. And then our mana base has a few channel lands with Soaring City and Abandoned Mire, and then the new dual land, Underground River, also very important in helping us cast the Gix on turn 3. And then, of course, Shipwreck Marsh, couple Swamps and Islands. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and seems quite reasonable. Turn 2 Vandal can set up our turn 3 Gix quite nicely.
turn one evolved sleeper. Okay. So I think we stick to the plan. Go for Vandal into Gix. Bankbuster. That's fine. So we can even set up an ambush now on evolved sleeper if they attack. Since they didn't keep up mana to grow it up to a 2-2. And try and start snowballing card advantage here. Okay, so we're very far ahead all of a sudden. But you never know against Mono Black. They could have some cheap removal to catch back up. Trespasser is fine. Now if we try and kill it, they can still crew Bank Buster. So that's probably not the best idea. So Gix is going to stay home, and then I could go for Fairy Vandal and Thopter Mechanic before attacking to start picking up extra plus one counters. And then next turn we can maybe start answering some of the opponent's creatures as well. Okay. Turn four, do we see Shieldreds? We have an answer at the ready. Yep. So they can crew Bankbuster with Shieldred before. It dies, but that's acceptable. Shieldred would otherwise be very good against us, punishing us for drawing cards. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Double mechanic will be good at enabling Kaito, since even if they get removed, we'll still have a Thopter to keep attacking. And then maybe hang on to cut down here. Opponent on an Esper deck. And a Thalia can be pretty annoying. So we won't be able to cut down enough turn. Between Mechanic and Fairy Vandal. If I play Mechanic, I still wouldn't be able to play Kaito because of the Thalia attacks next turn. So what's the likely sequence? Next turn, I guess I could like kill Thalia and bounce another creature, for instance. Then I'm probably still better off with a mechanic in play. Hope to dodge something like Rafine. It's gonna be an Adlin instead, also very good. So they can make a token. Okay, so... I think I might be fine trading. That way I can... Uh, Fading Hope Thalia and then cut down Adlin. Yeah, I think we need to do some damage control and make sure not to trust the auto-tapper. And then I wouldn't mind a Swamp Island. Isn't the worst since it still lets me play Kaito into Athalia. So maybe I should still keep it. Can also play Mechanic plus Fairy Vandal at the very least. And I'll just cut down now. Hit for one. So between Kaito and then double two drop, what do we prefer? I guess now with a Thali in play, I don't need to fear a one mana removal spell, but now I guess with a land, they could still cut down. It's going to be a Denic, and our opponent actually losing Iganja in the process. So yeah, there is a drawback to playing too many of those. So yeah, kind of like attack and then Kaito draw, it's going to phase out, and then next turn we can keep drawing and uh, getting the benefit on our creatures. And then if we can find a swamp, that will be nice too. Another mechanic. And there's a backup Adlin. That one's bad news. 
So we'll need to find a go for the throat at some point. At least the mechanic helps us chum block on the ground as well. And there's a swamp. Okay, I think now it's mechanic plus Gix. Thopter attacks. And then could make a ninja with Kaito as well. Let's see what we draw first, consider. So next turn I can deploy a couple more creatures. Kaito is likely to die. So we won't have that as a card draw engine anymore. Although, yeah, at least if I plus, I force them to commit more resources attacking Kaito. No Mechanic could still block Adlin if we want to. And if we get a Thopter token, that will still pair nicely with Gix. Alright, point's just going face. Makes sense. So I doubt we'll have a third Eye Ganjo, so I don't think I'm going to play around it. Uh, so in that case, I guess I could block a 1 1, block Denik, then we're taking 8, so then I can't really afford to draw more with Gix, so that's not great. So probably have to chump Adlin, block Denik, and take 4. All right, I actually had a third Iganjo. Fair enough. Well, that's a setback. So really need to find an answer to Adlin here. At least we still have Kaito. Fairy Vandal. Probably not quite what we need. Now I could, of course, just play a whole bunch of creatures and then stay back. I don't have to attack. Yeah, that's probably what's necessary here. Mechanic, double Vandal. And then I'll still loot with Kaito. But keep the Thopters back. And a go for the throat's exactly what we need. Okay. So I can maybe still chump Adlin for a turn instead of having to give up some of my more valuable creatures. Bono still with three cards in hand. On three lands, they've been able to do a lot. And Soaring City for two mana bounces mechanic. So these uh, legendary lands, I guess, used as spells in this case. Instead of as an extra land drop. Potent goes for an all-out attack. So that's a pretty clear block. And then block Thalia. Could double block Denik. Or I can just trade for a 1-1. One -one. So we're less likely to die to a go wide attack next turn. We've got to go for the throat for Adelin. And Clever Conductor will connive. Discarding another Adelin. Okay, cut down, not a bad draw. So now I can maybe attack with a Fairy Vandal, so I can plus Kai to up to 7 loyalty. And keep all the spells in hand. Might be a little bit greedy. I'll also have to pay a life to cast two black spells here, unless I draw Swamp. So I'll be at two life. Could also just make a ninja, of course. I think I'll just loot with Kaito without attacking. And then Swamp, I guess, would have been ideal, but uh, I'll let it go now. Pick up some counters. 
And then there is an argument for killing Adolin now, since they probably don't have another one, given that they discarded one just now. Um, in case our opponent plays the land that can give a legendary creature hexproof and indestructible. So let's just go for the throat now. And pass it back. And then Kaito could ultimate next turn. It's been a while since I've gotten the emblem. So whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a blue or black creature card and put it onto the battlefield. Well, that could certainly win the game. With double Fairy Vandal out, another Thalia doesn't change. Cut down. So I'm here for it. A grindy game against Asper Legends. And Kaito might go the distance. Opponent could still have a Soaring City here that they can channel, which would have been a reason for me to cut down Danik before Thalia entered the battlefield. So they didn't quite have as many legendaries. Opponent goes for an all-out attack. And I'll get the chance to block here. Probably should actually just block the 1-1 one -one so they don't gain any unnecessary life and kill Danik. Get an extra flyer to go with Kaito. And would love to see an emblem here. Okay, and then we can attack. And I can think of some fun creatures to get here. Shieldred. Puppeteer, perhaps. And then now get a Evangel of Synthesis, which will trigger Shieldred and Puppeteer. That's ah, pretty sweet. Play Shredder and pass. Yeah, I don't think we're actually casting any spells with the emblem, so playing Shredder first would not have helped, I don't think. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Early removal with Fading Hope and Cutdown. Up against what could be Monorant Aggro. So I think I'm more likely to want to cut down here on turn two. Next turn, maybe play Mechanic to stem the bleeding. And we'll cut down the Swift Spear. So the 1-1 one, one Flyers will keep packing in, but we can hopefully stop any ground creatures from hitting us. Alright, and the Festivities will kill our Mechanic. And a second copy to finish off the Thopter token, fair enough. Alright, so we're down to 13, opponents down to one card in hand as well. So we're still in okay shape. Let's play Evangel and see what else we draw. Another mechanic, so land can go. And then I guess we'll pass and keep up Fading Hope. Consider can help grow the mechanic once again. And a mechanized warfare. Okay, so now the Phoenix Chick will deal an extra point of damage. So it might be worthwhile bouncing just to uh, buy ourselves some more time. And the Lancer Shredder is perfect. So now we can go Lancer Shredder into Mechanic or Mechanic into Lancer Shredder. I think the counter on the flyer is probably more important. So it doesn't die to a 2 damage burn spell, for instance. And happy enough discarding Consider. Although Shore Up could also come in handy. No, I think I'll keep the Consider. We'll make it easier to keep the counters flowing. And then hit for 3 with Evangel. And hope her opponent doesn't top deck too many more 
haste creatures or burn spells. That land is fine. Okay, so we might have turned the corner here. Main phase fairy vandal. Consider. Trigger everything. And don't need a land. Shieldred's gonna be awesome too. Okay, so Evangel, Mechanic, can attack. We've got two flying blockers now. And Shieldred might be the final nail in the coffin. So let's say they do have another end of festivities dealing two to everything. I think that's acceptable. More likely to be a burn spell to finish off Lancer Shredder. So damage happens. And Akami's Flare. That's fine. So we'll just slam down this shield root and our opponent might concede. Down to four they go. Make that two. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a creature, which is a pretty big concern. Although we can consider to try and find one. And then we've got a nice set of interactive spells. So maybe it's still worth trying out, and then we'll have to go digging for a 2-drop. Opponent red-white. And Fairy Vandal will do. Would have been nice to consider after having a Fairy Vandal in place it picks up a counter, but so it goes. And they turn to Thalia, which we can uh, let resolve, and then next turn maybe... Fading Hope or Infernal Grasp, another Vandal. So, also not opposed to attacking and playing another Fairy Vandal first. That way if we do pick up some more card draw spells, we can actually start accumulating plus one counters as well. Also had the option of Shore Up, Untap Vandal to Ambush. Thalia, Danik shows up. Okay, so now, yeah, I guess just hit for two. And then might end up killing Danik, which is going to make it hard to race otherwise. Could also bounce Thalia, and then still Infernal Grasp Danik. And then we get to Scry in the meantime. And try and dig towards one of our card draw effects. Put and replace Thalia, that's fine. And there's the fairy, although Thalia sadly making it one more expensive is quite relevant. But we might be able to ambush Thalia here with the shore up. And then next turn play the fairy, start drawing and eventually making a token as well. Pono stuck on two lanes. Is having a hard time, but there's land number three. And a Relic of Legends. So probably a five color Joda deck is what we're up against. I'm gonna start by drawing, I think, to grow a Fairy Vandal. And then next turn... Maybe make a token, or we can play Puppeteer and keep drawing with Teferi, since that'll also start draining the opponent for two. Could see Joda this turn if our opponents found another land. It's gonna be older Rutstein instead. Can make a mana with a Relic, and they even made a treasure as well by milling a land. So could still see another three mana play. And it's going to be a Jadar. And another Thalia, fair enough. So our opponent's setting up a scary board for a potential Joda next turn. So, play Puppeteer. And yeah, I think just keep drawing. And our opponent should be close to dead in the air now. And hopefully we can survive a hit from Joda. And yep, there's the unifier. So 
all legendary creatures getting plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures they control. But I don't think they have lethal here, and they're still dying to the flyer. Okay, the Troublemaker triggers Joda. Finding Lagrella that deals with one of the Fairy Vandals. Pumping their legendaries even more. And then Jaxus could create a token of a creature. So the question is, can they actually kill us? And they're getting close if they attack with all. Definitely have to jump with a Puppeteer. So their opponent copies Lagrella. So we would be dead if it weren't for the legendary rule. Opponent exiles another Fairy Vandal, so essentially resetting the counters. Okay, so let's see here. If I can keep my Puppeteer alive, let's say we jump like this, take 14, and then next turn we'll be able to attack with Fairy Vandal and drain the opponent for two. That should be enough. Okay. So ended up being very close here. Bunch of triggers, end of turn. Opponent gets to draw off the Troublemaker. But we get our Fairy back. And then now, if I draw, we should be able to end the game. There is much the past can teach us. So yeah, a Relic of Legends, allowing a very explosive turn with Joda the Unifier, almost killing us out of nowhere. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential, especially if we draw a Swamp by turn 3. So I'll give myself the chance of curving a Vandal into Gix. Got some cheap removal at the ready. So as long as our opponent doesn't have too much removal, we'll be able to deal with a creature deck quite well. Turn 1 Swamp, shore up, also useful interaction. And it's going to be an underdog, no surprises there. And there's a swamp, perfect. So we may only get one attack here before opponent kills Gix. But it's still going to give us a bit of a tempo advantage. And if we get to untap, we'll have a shore up at the ready. So our opponent has a red black and a dragon engine, so maybe a Mishra melt deck here. That's exciting. Take three. But now we feel like we're in the driver's seat. We can cut down the dragon engine, perhaps. So Gix can attack. Draw two. And our grip is full of cheap interaction, which is exactly what we want when we've got our card draw engine going in our favor. So I could even play a ledger shredder here. And still keep up shore up. I'll take a hit from Underdog, that's fine. And there's Mishra, so next turn they could still technically unearth the Dragon Engine to meld. Good thing we have lots of cheap interaction still at instant speed. And then, probably can't afford to shore up to ambush. Could have also just killed Underdog before it got a chance to attack. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll just cut down the Underdog, should have done so before it attacked. But that's okay. So go for the throw to Mishra. And attack. Happy to pay some life. And then if I consider I'll trigger Launcher Shredder as well. Probably one shore up can go. And don't need to consider. Okay, perfect. Five mana, opponent could bring back the dragon engine. It's gonna be a shield instead. 
Still dies to go for the throat. And that should be the end of the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a creature, although we can always make a ninja with Kaito. So I'll try it. And then turn one swamp, turn two river, turn three shipwreck marsh. The dual lands always look very similar, so I have to be careful which to play first. And then, yeah, hopefully our opponent's playing a creature deck. We can keep the board under control with cut down and go for the throat. A fairy vandal was a great draw. So if our opponent taps out for a creature, we can go vandal and start drawing with Kaito. Opponent black, green with a loam speaker. Okay. And yeah, I think attack, play Kaito makes sense. Could also take a more conservative approach of just killing the Loam Speaker and then next turn playing Kaito, which will also keep Shore up for a Vandal available. There's definitely a world where that could work out better, but I think the more mine efficient play is to just play Kaito here. And then ask the opponent a question, can you answer Fairy Vandal to stop the card draw? We can probably kill whatever they ramp into with Go for the Throat. So I'm not too concerned that they have an extra mana for a turn. And if they do answer Vandal, I might end up making a Ninja token. Right, Liliana answers Vandal. Would have uh, gotten around Shore up as well. A Lancer Shredder is not bad either. So I can Lancer Shredder cut down, which will connive and then still keep up Shore up for protection. And then I think Kaito still makes a ninja. The fairies too good to discard here. So yeah, this is a tough one. I can uh, discard Go for the Throat or Shore Up. Maybe Shore Up's not needed since we have Teferi as a follow-up, so if Shredder dies it's not the end of the world. And Go for the Throat might be necessary to kill a larger green creature. And then a ninja also plays around another Liliana. I guess if Liliana pluses to discard, I might get rid of Go for the Throat just to make sure we play the fairy. And our opponent turns out to be a Junt deck with the Troublemaker. Okay. Go for the Throat kills Launcher Shredder. But now we should be in a pretty dominant position if the ninja can attack. Liliana down to one, and then Teferi make a spirit, which will also grow from Kaito, and her opponent explodes. Yeah, too many planeswalkers, too much card advantage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing blue mana, so can I keep... Hmm, this one's pretty sketchy, although a single blue source gets us pretty far, since we'll be able to Leisure Shredder, connive into more spells, hopefully, and... Uh, yeah, we have double cut down, so it's not like we're gonna die right away to an aggressive deck. So I'll give it a shot. Turn one mountain into a phoenix chick. I cut cut down, but uh, I think I'm gonna save it for a potential two drop since we can easily block the phoenix chick with our flyers. And there's a shipwreck marsh. Okay, so could play it now, I suppose. Or I could keep up double cut down. I think I'm more likely to want to go Electro Shredder plus cut down next turn. And a Dwarven Forge Chanter is gonna cost two life to kill. Fair enough. So I don't have to kill it now. If I want to connive, I can just go Electro Shredder cut down in my turn. And then the Shredder will be out of range from a Lightning Strike at least. And I hope to find another land for Puppeteer. The fairy is a nice one too, if we can get to it. 
So between Mechanic and Vandal, which one do I prefer? Probably the Vandal, since it'll be able to stop the Phoenix Chick as well. So next turn we could go Vandal plus Cutdown, pick up another Kanai from Lodger Shredder. And if the Chick attacks, we suspect a Lightning Strike, so we could just take it. And our opponent lets us on tap. Okay, so if I go Vandal plus cut down, they can Lightning Strike the Vandal. That might be okay. Could wait until the opponent's turn to maybe surprise grow the Ledger Shredder. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. So just pass, and then the plan is to block Phoenix Chick. If they go for Lightning Strike on Shredder, I can put an extra counter on it at least. Ancestral Anger, I guess, means we can no longer make the Shredder block Phoenix Chick play and survive a Lightning Strike, so might as well go Fairy Vandal into Cutdown now to deny the card draw of Ancestral Anger. And then they can Lightning Strike Fairy Vandal if they want. Alright, it's going to be an Abrade instead. And do I want a Mechanic? Yeah, I guess maybe keeping Mechanic plus Cutdown as a sequence is better. Don't know if I should just discard Teferi at this point, but I still have hopes for uh, Teferi coming down. So, could also just get greedy and discard Cut Down, and then keep all the sweet 4 and 5 drops and Mechanic. And then now Gix, also great combo with uh, flying creatures. Yeah, discard Mechanic, and then next turn Gix attack with Shredder, and then we should be able to hit our land drops for Puppeteer, which will offset the life loss from Gix. And take it from there. Evangel is also nice. Perfect. So our opponent is in trouble. They'll need some big curve toppers. Lightning Strike can deal with kicks. But a 4-6 Shredder is not going to be easy for them to deal with. And there's a land for Teferi. Evangel can go. And uh, backup Gix is not bad either. So if I make a Spirit token to Furry Falls to 2, could die to a Haste creature. Whereas if I just draw with Teferi up to 5 loyalty, it's unlikely to die. And then next turn maybe make a token which will grow as we draw with Gix. Or I could just make a token, let them kill Teferi if they want to. And then the token with Gix is just going to get out of hand. Yeah, that's probably fine too. Who's that handsome devil? And our opponent understandably explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a promising hand. Vandal into a Gix, and then even the Puppeteer to maybe start draining the opponent up against Green White. Okay, I guess we can play Islands. Turn 1 Fading Hope, turn 2 Vandal, turn 3 Gix. And I think I prefer Vandal over Ledger Shredder here for the surprise factor. And we'll also start putting counters on it right away. And our opponent on a tokens deck, okay. Would love to hit our fourth line drop. And there we go. Could also put an upkeep stop on the off chance we want a Fading Hope the Queen before our draw step. Unlikely to be the case, but uh, might as well. Adlin will make two tokens, but we can at least block one of them. And between Human and Soldier, Humans typically have more value with uh, cards like Catilda. Although now with the Soldier synergies, I guess the Soldier token might be better, but uh, some cards don't work off tokens specifically. So we'll draw. And we've got plenty of answers to Adlin, luckily. So let's see here. Can go a Lancer Shredder plus go for the throat. 
That seems fine. And then I'll get rid of a Ledger Shredder. Keep all the interaction since we've got gigs for card advantage. Now, next turn they could play Wandering Emperor to exile Gix, but I think that's still acceptable. Still have Puppeteer to provide a nice drain effect. And I can enable it with Fading Hope thanks to the Ledger Shredder conniving here. Another go for the throat's great too. So it's gonna be a destroy evil to kill Shredder. And a token to block. Two mana left. So play Puppeteer and then attack. I think I'm fine if they jump. Since we'll still get to draw and trigger Puppeteer and Vandal. Could even consider at instant speed to do so. And have access to Fading Hope at instant speed. Opponent might have the token maker here which would make two tokens plus one from Queen. So maybe I just attack with Fairy Vandal to play it safe, since I don't want to trade Yawgmoth for three 1-1s, because I would assume they would just uh, put all four 1-1s in front of Gix in that case. All right, another Destroy Evil I wasn't really expecting, since we could have had a Shore Up here for protection. But um, yeah, I guess that means I might just want to consider to enable Puppeteer at least. And a counter seems fine. So drain them for two. Okay, if the queen attacks, I'll just take it. They can probably make some more tokens at instant speed. Even though potentially trading for a puppeteer would have been fine. But uh, yeah, grows up to a 5-5. Five five. So let's try and get rid of that as soon as possible. Adversary just a 3-1. And... Uh, now what? Kill the adversary, since I don't necessarily want them replaying it to pump the team. So let's go for the throat. Attack with Puppeteer. And I could double Fading Hope if they make me. Opponent just chumps. Play Kaito, draw. No secret is safe with and then we'll hang on to Fading Hope, I think. Could also bounce the Queen to play around a protection spell or an instant speed token maker. But they might main phase a token maker at sorcery speed, in which case we can bounce the Queen to prevent them from getting any additional ones. And a Fairy Vandal seems fine. So now we're starting to turn the corner. Opponent replays Queen, but now we can start out-tempoing them. So let's see here. I'm even fine main phase drawing with Kaito just to trigger Puppeteer if I want to attack with both. In which case I want to play my Mechanic and Vandal first, so those also start growing. And discard a land. No secret I can't and then I could Fading Hope the Queen attack. And a go for the throat seems great. Attack with both. Opponent could triple block. But we'll still draw. So double trump instead. In which case we don't draw, but don't really expect a sweeper here. And even if they have one, we'll get a Thopter, we'll get something back with Puppeteer. 
All right, so we got to see our blue-black draw two deck in action, and the Brothers War definitely gave the deck some powerful new tools between Gix at three mana as a powerful card draw engine, the Puppeteer at four, and then Teferi, another big one at five mana, and then more cheap interaction cards like a Gopher the Throat are very helpful too. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.